re just re reviewing last night's game. I thought we did some good stuff. Uh, we um, <clears throat> there was a lot of you know a lot of positives from last night's game, but we've also got to uh, you know get better in in some areas. I look, uh, you know, we'll, we'll know a lot more about our team this week, especially uh, you know with having two two tough games because uh, you got you know four teams in it and obviously our three opponents it's going to play two of the three and it's going to be you know you got uh, uh, Baylor and Illinois and Indiana State three well coached basketball clubs with good players and good teams so we're going to a lot about our squad after our two games on Thursday Friday uh, but I did think we did some good things yesterday with just you know defensively did a couple good things uh, offensively we were a little bit better uh, I, you know, obviously the biggest thing is we got to cut back our turnovers. Now, we did have 16 turnovers. Two of those were lane violations by Shaq. One of them was Markel hit the referee. Yeah. Um, um, and then there was one where Nick King had that great rebound and he stepped out of bounds. So they rewarded him with the rebound. So technically, if you eliminate those four, you're down to 12, um, which is much better. So four of the 16 were – one was – Markel ran the ref. One, Nick had a great 50-50 play, but he stepped out of bounds. And then, then the twos were Shaq's lane violations. So if you take those out, you're down to 12, which is not as bad, um, uh, which we need to probably have it. We're more 12 to less. Uh, what were your overall thoughts on the guard for last night, particularly Markel? You know, Grant, I thought Markel was, um, um, uh, was OK. Um, I thought he did some good things. And um, um, I, was, I was, for his first college game starting at the point guard spot, I, you know, considering he really hadn't played in over two years, was pretty good. Um, so I was proud of him for that. thought he did some good stuff. thought he communicated and talked and uh, got us going with a, with a big three early in the start to start the game. And so uh, I, was, I was happy with Markel's play. Why did you decide that he was the guy you wanted to build last night? <clears throat> uh, Jason, I just felt that uh, he, uh, you know, felt he was most ready. It was just what I felt he was most ready at the time and he was most comfortable. And, um, you know, that was just that was uh, uh, just kind of my feel on that. It gives you a defensive presence at the top. Yeah, he, he, he's got a very good IQ. He's got a, he, he has a good understanding of the game. He's got a good IQ, uh, understands the game. And, um, um, and um, you know, and that's just something that uh, um, he, uh, <clears throat> he gives us. And I'm happy for him that he – can do that because he does understand not only his position, which is the point guard position, but I think he understands the other positions on the floor. Very similar to what Chris Crawford was with his basketball IQ on that. Can we expect to see him starting the point guard in Vegas? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see for right now there be any, any change. So uh, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would assume right now that the same lineup that we started would be the same lineup that we go on Thursday. Just the back-to-back, -back, what does that do for you with a young team? Do you like that? They don't, you know, you don't have time to worry about Baylor, but then this one just throws the ball, right? Let's tune into the Josh Pastner Coaches Show Sunday night, right? Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll, that's a great question to ask, and that will be, uh, uh, be able to find that out. And um, um, not about the, the Justin Fuente show, just, you know. We're cramming them both in. Yeah, we're cramming them both in. So watch let's them both. watch them both. And uh, uh, that will be a question we need to ask, but that will be – to be determined, um, and and it's sort of like a conference match in a sense of you know because we're going to have some you know Thursday Saturdays or you know uh, uh, stuff like that. So you're going to have to, even though this is Thursday Friday, it's still a quick turnaround, and um, um, you know it, we'll, we'll just have to adjust to it and, and play well. Look, we we've been through it before in the past, and and um, and you just got to got to get the job done. I know you're still not happy with the turnovers, but. Just from your point of view, how much better did the offense look last night with the way you guys were passing? Yeah, we we were, we were better. Uh, we we moved the ball better, and we're going to keep getting better. We spent a lot of time in practice cleaning some things up, so I thought it was it was better yesterday. And we're going to still get some things better, but uh, uh, we got to continue to to get better, and we will get better. I, I do believe that, but it's going to be a process. Not going to happen overnight. Got to remember, uh, you know, Pookie Powell hasn't played, and you know he was at the rec center last year. I mean, that's where he played, the rec center. I mean, he was playing guys like me. And, you know, that's who he was playing against. You know, 37-year-old men or, and or college kids. That's if, real talent, then. Not real talent. You know, lack of talent. That's who he was playing against all last year at the rec center. Uh, Markel Crawford hadn't played in two years in a game. Uh, Chris Crawford or Chris uh, Hawkins, think about that. His freshman year in junior college, he 
did not play. He's injured. Sophomore, I think he played in 21 total games. And last year, he played a total of six games. And that's 27 games Chris Hawkins has played in three years before going to this year. I mean, that's no different than basically Pookie or, or Markell. So it's just those, th those type of things are just going to take time with our team for game experience to gel. Uh, I do believe we'll get there in time, but it's just going to be a process. There's going to be some highs and lows with it. It seemed like a couple of the turnovers, at least maybe, maybe three or four of them, were, were defenses collapsing <coughs> with the big guys, you know, doubling your guys. Is the only way to combat that to, to hit shots? And maybe just no, there, there, we're, there's, gonna we're going to see that. But that's okay. Hey, look, last year when we played Virginia, our best offense was when we got double teamed, and we just – we just miss so many point blank layups. I mean, if we made some of those layups, you know, if you look back on the tape on Virginia, we would have been up 14 to six. Might have been a different ball game. We missed three, excuse me, four point blank non contested layups at the rim. So, you know, to start the game, that's eight points we gave away. Um, so we're, we work, we've worked on it all summer and preseason, you know, about getting doubled because I knew we were going to get doubled. We just got to handle it, have a little better spacing, and, um, uh, we just got to, uh, you know, execute out of it. Tell us about Baylor and, and, and Kenny Cherry. I guess you guys saw him in the scrimmage last year. Yeah, no, Baylor, Baylor's really good. Scott Drew does a great job, obviously. I mean, they've won a lot of games. I mean, I think the job that he's done is probably the most, um, one of the greatest rebuilding jobs, maybe the greatest in the history of all of college basketball. I mean, he took over a program that was, that was, I don't know if you can get any lower than, I mean, they had a, a teammate shoot a teammate, you know, it was ground zero. I think they're only allowed to play in a certain amount of games, about seven scholarship guys. And what Scott Drew has done in that program, I don't think it's he doesn't get enough credit nationally for him taking something. That, that's about as ground zero as you can get. And to building where they've been knocking on twice at the, foot, at the doorstep of getting to the Final Four, two Elite Eights. They've recruited at an all-time high level. They've won a lot of games. And um, Scott Drew deserves a lot, a lot of credit. And... Uh, uh, they've got a great staff, great assistant coaches. Um, Jerome Tang, uh, who <clears throat> you know I've known for a long time, actually coached. Uh, I was was one of my assistants back with the Houston Hoops back in the day. Uh, is his assistant been with him since he got the job? In fact, uh, Scott Drew, uh, when he got the job at Baylor, first person he called my father, called my father and he called myself, said, "Who does he need to hire?" We told him, to hire. and Jerome at the time was a um, he was a high school coach. And um, and he took a chance on him, and he's done. Jerome's done a great job for him, but uh, um, but he's got a great staff. So, uh, but Scott deserves a lot of credit for what he's done for building that program. They got four guys that average a double figure. Seems like a pretty balanced attack. They're they're good. They got really. I mean, <clears throat> their guards are really good. Um, and you know, um, I mean, obviously, they're, they're you know what they're they're balanced. Even though those two, those two, those two guards are really good, they're balanced because they're 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 bigs, they're front court, they're front line, uh, are are guys that can do different things. Uh, I mean, Ricardo's a guy that's just a beast in there. Motley, I mean, he's good. I mean, the kid O'Neill, who's a transfer from Denver, you know, um, you know, Prince will come in off. He's kind of a four, even though he's really a three because he can shoot it so well. Um, they just got really good balance. I don't think you can just say, okay, let's take out this one guy, let's take out Cherry. Because no one else can beat you, you're wrong. You just can't eliminate Cherry, and then they have other guys that can beat you. You can't, you know, you just can't eliminate Ricardo and say Let's, you, know, you you got to really guard all five of their guys. They're all offensive weapons on the floor. I know there are no top 25 teams out there, but I mean, you guys go out there and win a couple games. I imagine that would be a nice step in the right direction. For you guys. Yeah, I just want to see us keep getting better, keep playing better. I think everyone wants to see the improvement from where we were, from Christian Brothers to Wichita State. Prairie View, I, th I think media, Tiger Nation, myself, we obviously we want to win. Everyone wants to win every game, but I think everyone wants to see the continuation of improvement. I think that's what people want to see. They understand where we are with the, with the uh, newness of our team and the, all the newcomers and youth. That's just going to take some time, but I think everyone wants to see it moving in the right direction, which I believe we will. Start time is a little unusual at 11 o'clock. Do you do anything? Different leading up to that? No, we're not going to do anything a little differently. We'll just try to, you know, uh, add some things in during the day, um, you know, but try to break the day up a little bit. But uh, um, good news is Baylor is on the same, you know, time zone as we are, so they'll, they'll deal with it. But once you get there, it's at the Orleans Hotel that uh, uh, the guys will just, you know, with the lights and everything, we'll be ready to go. 
You don't want to wait around eating turkey all day, though. No, we won't be doing that. We'll have a normal. We'll, we, we can do the turkey day on Saturday, which will be a day off for us. So we can do the turkey day then. I know in past years, uh, just being around the holidays, is this another business trip for you guys? That's what Avery said. We're not yeah. out there to have a vacation. No, um, we're not staying on the strip. And um, <clears throat> my, uh, um, even my wife asked me, hey, why, why, aren't, why aren't you guys staying on the strip? I said, I said, Carrie, this is, this is a business trip. I said, if you want to go to Vegas, you know, with your friends, you can stay on the strip. I said, if you're going with me, whether it's business trip or if it's just myself, I would stay at the Fairfield Inn Marriott or Courtyard Marriott anyway. You know, so even when we go in summer recruiting, I'm at the Courtyard Marriott. So um, just because especially plus those hotels, it's so much easier to get in and out when you're at those smaller hotels with parking and everything else. But um, so that's just that's how I like it. Um, I'm, I'm more into simple. I think simple is better. Better. I think simp simplicity is powerful. So uh, I think that's good for our team. You simple. Shot at my hotel reservations. Coach? No, I'm not. I mean, I, I think those hotels are great. I just they're not for me. I'm not. I'm not one of those hotel guys. I'm. I'm good at the. Uh, I'm good at those. You know, just a quick in and out. Just make sure it's clean room and they got an exercise room. I'm good. Nothing more than that. What do you know about Illinois and Indiana State? Um, Il uh, Illinois. Uh, you know, obviously. I haven't watched any film on e neither team yet, so but I'll do the best I can. I just know that you know Illinois by, uh, with Coach Gross, they've got some good guards. Um, they've been playing really well. They're undefeated. They've been uh, beating some teams pretty handily. Uh, I think they've got really good offensive firepower. We recruited a kid pretty hard that's on their team, Kendrick Nunn. Uh, Indiana State, coached by Greg Lansing, uh, who's, who's a dear friend of mine, love Greg. Uh, they they really spread the floor. They challenged Wichita State last year. They should they had Wichita State beat, um, and uh, they they lost towards the end. But uh, uh, they're a really good team, sound, fundamental, disciplined team. So uh, you know Illinois is a is a great club. Going to you know compete in the Big Ten there, and then obviously um, Indiana State's going to be competing with Wichita State in the in the Missouri Valley. Has, has Pookie earned that spot ahead of the Cuban right now? Um, no, I just, you know, Pookie's, I, I felt a little more comfortable yesterday with Pookie. Part of that was Keedron's, you know, he's got to, he's got to be better and he knows that, but it's going to take time. And he's told me it's going to take some time. So when he's back to, when I feel, and he feels he's back to the level of being all SEC, then he would obviously have a better chance to get more minutes. And what did you think of your pace yesterday? Um, I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was it was great. I thought it was it was solid. Um, uh, I thought I thought we improved. I, I, I think we've made the, a, a right step in the right direction offensively. We still need to do better in some areas, but I didn't think I didn't think it was too slow, and and I didn't think it was too methodical or robotic either. So you're still going to be up and down team and stuff about maybe we should slow it down. Yeah, I still want to. No, well, I, I, we need to we need to play physically flat, fast, but mentally slow. That's really what it is, physically fast but mentally slow. Do you sense some excitement from the guys? I mean, you didn't play that opening Friday, then you play, then you kind of have a week off. Yeah. Now it's really going to pick up here. Oh, yeah, we're gonna, we got a lot of games here. You know, a lot, I mean, some teams have already played five games before we even play two. So uh, we're going to get in some game mode here, and this will, this will be good for us. And, you know, that's, that's, that's what it's about. You want to get on the floor and play games and try to get many, as many wins as you can. Uh,